not as prepared as many of the other videos on YouTube, but I'm working from notes, many notes, taking a three-day weekend at my work. And I have to tell you, these may be rough, but this is how I really feel about most retail jobs I've had. If you work retail, you may be able to relate to these. If you buy anything retail, I ask you to please pay attention because you may be able to lower prices by making all of our jobs easier. First of all, if the person you're talking to is behind the cash register, they don't set the prices. Complaining at the person at the cash register doesn't do anything but make their day longer and more difficult. It won't lower your prices. It will simply make them have to hire more. It will simply make them more frustrated, which drives prices up for you by the continual training mode of putting new people in because they can't stand your average person complaining. It's that easy. If I'm running a cash register, I guarantee you I don't have the corporate power to change prices for you. I'm sorry if that's hard, but that's where it is. Number two, how stupid can you be before I'm not allowed to make fun of you anymore? I know I'm not supposed to make fun of the mentally handicapped. I know I'm supposed to not make fun of people with learning difficulties. So my question is, where's the line? How stupid are you allowed to be where I'm still allowed to mock you as soon as you leave the store? This one bothers me. Another is variety. Quit complaining. Where I work, we have over 30 brands of cigarettes. We have Kings, Lights, 100s, Light 100s, Menthols, Menthols Light, Menthol 100s, Menthol Light 100s. We have Ultra Lights, Ultra 100s, Ultra Menthols, Ultra Menthol Light 100s. Get over the fact that we're out of one. There are over 2,000 varieties of tobacco for you to choose from. Just because we don't have the right one today doesn't mean you can't smoke or you should call me any compound words that refer to how my mother had sex. Please. Here's another one for you. Just because I have the power to make change for you doesn't mean I have the power to affect anything. If you wish to come in and talk about the weather, that's great. If you want to tell me about your car problems, I'm here to listen. I don't want to hear about your bladder infection. I don't want to see the fact that your gums are bleeding. Please, if your gums are bleeding, you shouldn't be bragging about this to people, much less to the stranger behind the counter. Please don't lift up your lips to bare your gums to show me that they're bleeding. I can't do anything about it, and I don't care. Here's another one, and this is a big one. You may want to remember this at every retail, wholesale, any kind of outlet you go to. No one has ever burst into flame for saying please or thank you. If you just walk in and say, Morrow, I'm sorry, I'm going to treat you like crap. It's that easy. Morrow doesn't mean anything. Could I have a pack of Marlboros? I'd like some Marlboros. May I have some Marlboros? Marlboros, please. It doesn't take that much longer, and it may make your experience and my experience just a little bit better. If I've closed, if any place is closed, if the sign saying open is off or a closed sign is up, when you walk up and pull the door and it's locked, yanking it that second time doesn't really help. Yanking it twice more after that still doesn't help. The triple yank as hard as you can do afterwards still doesn't work. We desperately want you to come into our business when we're open, but yanking the door as hard as you can doesn't do anything. Add to this the fact that when you kick the door once you find out we're not open, it doesn't help you at all. It only makes it a little harder to be the person who has to take care of you. And trust me, we remember your face. And at the end of the previous one about I can't do anything about it, I don't want to see your surgery scar. I've had three people this weekend show me their surgery scars. I don't want to see it, really. I don't care where it is on your body. I don't want to see it. I don't care how much of your liver they pulled out. I feel bad for you. I don't want to see the giant scar on your obese gut for any reason. This goes double if the scar is anywhere below your belt. Trust me. Things I learned this weekend while working. The entire problem with America right now is Cuba, because evidently Obama is a Cuban Muslim. Because this is where Muslims, and yes, I'm saying it the way the customer did, this is where Muslims are from. Cuba. Turns out Cuba's in Central Africa. <clears throat> How about the nice, polite gentleman who came in? He really was nice. He was a sweetheart. His daughter was sweet, maybe nine years old, an attractive, very polite girl, who wanted me to check his four-year-old lottery tickets. They can't be cashed, I explained. Check them anyway, he explained. I thank you. An inverse law. The more impatient a human being is while standing in line, 
the more they dance back and forth, roll their eyes, and shake their fist over the fact that I'm dealing with someone in front of them, the more likely it is they won't be able to find their debit card, will wait forever to find exact change, and will take longer with their transaction than the person they were complaining about before them. If you can't get it done quickly, don't complain that someone else couldn't get it done quickly. And as one last one, I don't really care what facts you're carrying. Most retail outlet people don't. Most cashiers don't. Most people who help you at any store don't care about your facts. But if you're going to unload facts on me, at least have the facts. This goes out especially to the lady who came in wearing three crucifixes. Not three crosses, but three crucifixes. I pointed out that one of them was very nice. It was, it was a brass or bronze orthodox piece. It was a gorgeous crucifix with minute relief detail. And she asked me in response, but why am I wearing three? I couldn't think of a reason to wear three crucifixes at once. So like a moron, I bit and asked why she would wear three. She explained to me that three people were on the cross that day on cavalry. Cavalry, mind you, not Calvary. Three people were on the cross that day on Calvary. Jesus, God, and Satan. Now, this isn't exactly how I'd read the Bible, but at this point it's too late to correct her. It seems that Jesus was able to talk God into accepting Jesus as the Savior as his soul, while Satan tempted him for the forty days they hung on the crosses. This woman then told me that I needed to read the Bible, or the understanding of God's Word would fade in our youth. Please don't give me your facts.